All right, well, this is a cool video for you today because behind me are two trucks that are specced about as similarly as physically possible, albeit 20 years apart. A 2001 Dodge Ram 1500 4x4 off-road with a sport appearance pack and a 2021 Ram 1500 4x4 off-road with, you guessed it, a sport appearance pack. And Andre, yo dude, we're gonna compare them today. So let's start by talking about the styling on, let's do the new truck first. Yes, it's really cool because we have black and red TFL colors, right? Yep. But you can kind of see the grill. Well, they went away from the crosshair grill, right? Uh, all the fans of Dodge Rams are going to be crying right now. Yeah. I know this, though. This is pretty cool. They color matched everything. Yeah, totally. And that's what the sport appearance pack actually gives you. Because if you, if you didn't have this, you would have a, gro a chrome grill and some other items, maybe even the chrome parts on the bumper. But you know what's cool about the sport pack? What? It's available on variety different trim levels. So you can get like a big horn sport package, oh. a Laramie like this truck is, and others and others. And also the off-road package is the same kind of progression, right? You can add it to any truck. I interrupt this video to let you know about this week's TFL bids bargain. We have some really cool trucks and SUVs available for sale. And in this case, it's a 2005 Jeep Wrangler, but it's not a TJ, it's actually an LJ. Very, very rare. Some people call it the holy grail of Wranglers. Straight six engine, longer wheelbase, a little bit more space on the inside. It's in really great condition, low miles, and it's available at tflbids.com at no reserve. And also Nathan gives us a personal walk around of this Jeep to show you the exact condition that is in. And also, we're gonna have up to three vehicles, trucks or off-roaders available on the site for sale every single week. So please submit your truck or a 4x4 off-road SUV. You could sell it right there to like-minded enthusiasts at tflbids.com. Now this is pretty cool. So the old truck also has a color-matched grill. Uh, it's got the sport bumper, which was unique to the uh, sport appearance package. Uh, but I think the biggest difference between the two is even though this truck looks lifted, <laughs> this is how it came from the factory. So the off-road group gave you about a two inch lift. It gave you these big beefy tires, special wheels. And I mean, it's pretty amazing the height difference between the two. This one's much more vertical, much more slab sided. The new one certainly got some more curves to it. They've still retained a little bit of that semi look with the uh, lower lights than the hood, but um, they've changed quite a bit. Yeah, but Tommy, what happened to the paint on this truck? It's disintegrated, uh, it's horrible. <laughs> So this truck actually, like you said, 20 years old, but not a lot of miles, about 130,000 miles yeah. in that time period. But I think it was outside all of its life, never garaged probably, and also had a hard life. Well, I also think that Ram probably didn't use the highest quality paint. Uh, that could be possible. They, they, they painted it with, with like watercolors or something. <laughs> but why don't you pop the hood on the new Ram and we'll talk about the engine differences. Oh yeah, it's Magnum versus Hemi. Yeah, so. 5.7 liter Hemi in the new truck. This one though has come into the 21st century with something called e-torque. Do you want to explain that, Andre? Heck yeah, um, and actually it's pretty affordable option these days for 2021 Rams. So this is, a, like you said, a 5.7 liter Hemi. The e-torque uh, electric motor is actually right here and it's attached to the drivetrain via the serpentine belt. And it's a little bit of assist, right? So you have 395 horsepower still total. Yep. You have 410 pound-feet of torque still total. But the electric motor can fill in with up to about 130 pound-feet of torque. And it's only about 200 bucks extra. I really don't think it does much, to be honest, Andre. It's kind of like a beefy alternator that'll uh, spin the engine up, uh, you know, when you are in a start-stop situation. But I really, like, I've driven the e-torque versus a non-e-torque. It's almost impossible to tell the difference on the road. Yeah, but the, you know what this truck does? It has good fuel economy, about 19-ish combined. It's okay. Uh, for a four-wheel drive crew cab, you yep. know, it's okay. It's yeah. not probably the best in class right now. Right. Uh, but it's also very smooth driving, very quiet. I mean, it's refined to almost to nth degree. Well, let's look at the old truck because this one doesn't have a Hemi. No, it has something else very special. And let me see. There's a little bit of a hood latch. First of all, the grill comes with the hood. Yes, yeah, so you've got a big access to the 5.9 liter, uh, what was this, Magnum, Andre? Heck, heck yeah, it's a 360 cubic inch motor, which was pretty 
you know, well regarded and pretty popular. It was also in like Grand Cherokees and Durangos and several other vehicles. In 1998, it was upgraded for power. Yep. Massive. 245 horsepower. Wow, what a beast. And, what a monster. <laughs> and about 335 pound feet of torque. So, way less power, obviously, than the 395 in the new truck. Um, and also a four speed automatic versus eight. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly down on horsepower, down on torque. It is also down on fuel economy. I think. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm not sure what the EPA number was, but if, if this thing manages like 11. Doing, it wasn't very great. You're doing pretty well. Torque was pretty good though. I think this was like 335. Yeah, yeah, yeah approximately. Or 345 maybe. Yeah, it was, it was pretty good back in the day. Um, and, and then of course you had the horrible automatic transmission behind it, which were known for imploding on themselves. All right, that's good. Well, you can uh, clearly see the classic old Dodge Ram, slight puff of blue on start up there. I think it sounds pretty good. This one has an aftermarket Flowmaster exhaust on it, so it's a little bit beefier than stock, but let's see what the new one sounds like. All right, well, also sounds pretty good. I think if you put the same Flowmaster on this, it would really wake it up. From the factory though, it's pretty tame. So Tommy, before we look at the beds, let's look at the cabs, okay? And okay. then go inside a, a little bit as well. Uh, this is what's known as a quad cab, right? Because you do have four doors, but you have little suicide doors. Mm. And you know, dude, 20 years ago, Ram and some other companies didn't actually offer a full four-door half-ton trucks. So you couldn't get the four doors in this one? In the crew cab, yeah. It was kind of before this latest um, kind of popularity of a crew cab family truckster. Interesting, very interesting. Yeah, yeah. so I would say the back seat usability is probably far less than the new truck. It's a little bit minimal. I will say though, I think the interior is pretty cool in this. So it's got this kind of very 90s pleated pattern on the seats that almost makes it look like a city bus. <laughs> but the yes. seats have held up pretty well. They do fold up there, like you have mentioned. Yeah, and also there's a bit of a kind of a transmission hump. Yeah. Powertrain hump here. Not a heck of a lot of uh, legroom, although you can move this up a little and offer your passenger a little bit more space. Um, and also you have six person configuration, right? That's right, yeah. And it's, uh, it's basically a front bench and then this folds down there in the middle. So you can uh, have a center armrest. Yes. Now, the interior is, is pretty well equipped, I think. It's got power mirrors, power door locks, power windows, air conditioning, cruise control. One issue with these trucks is the dash is all implode on themselves. Now, we just bought this basically tack on dash cover to kind of clean it up at least a little bit. Yeah, and it's in the sun right now. It's kind of forming itself to the dashboard <laughs> yeah, right now. We'll go with that. But you can see like the binnacles all chewed up. Kind of cracked, and yeah. And that's just one of the common issues on these old Rams is the dashes were not well made. You can also see, it's got dual cup holders there. Dude, you can put a big gulp in there. <laughs> Proper lever for the four-wheel drive. ka -chunk, ka -chunk. And a column shift. Heck yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So how much, uh, we need to talk about like capability, like towing and beds. Yeah. And bed space. So let's check this out. By the way, this truck is also part of our series. Oh, there's a thing you have to do. You have to, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this truck is part of our uh, truck series that are going to be in a TFL truck soon. Yep. We have two or three actually $5,000 or under trucks and this is one of them. Yep. And by the way, this is five grand. We purchased it, right? Uh-huh. The Ram that's available at Johnson Auto Plaza, it's about 56 grand. Gee whiz. I don't know what the new price was on this truck, but I don't imagine it was 56. It, I don't think it was 56 either. How long is this bed? This is like six and a half feet. Okay. We have a new gator cover here, um, the tunnel cover on it. And this is a really usable bed. And it was kind of a standard length. Um, you can now get a new Ram with a six and a half foot bed also. Interesting. But Interesting. but that particular one does not have it. You also notice down here, it's got uh, color matched bumpers, which was kind of cool for back Nicely dented. Day. Nicely dented, of course. Uh, dual exhaust, but that's because we added the dual exhaust. It yeah. would have had a single outlet originally. But the big deal is, um, if you got the offered package, you got a limited slip rear diff, you got extra skid plates, you got a stronger front axle. Um, and special shocks, probably. Probably especially, upgraded yeah. shocks, yeah. yeah. 
No, and, it's cool. I think it, I think it's, it's a cool looking truck. And you said you looked up in the manual and online, and it's about 7,200 pounds of max towing, yeah, right? Yeah, 7,150, I think, is the official number. And you can see two uh, drum brakes in the rear. And the five lug hub. You can notice that too. Very good point. Yeah, yeah five lug hub. So yeah. very different from... From the current or the new one. Yeah, do you want to show the inside on the new one? Yeah, heck yeah, let's do it. Let me close the hood really quick. So the sport package, sport appearance package and off-road package on the new truck, actually they're quite affordable. Um, the off, um, the off-road package, which we'll go over in a second, is about 850 bucks. So, um, but here you can see this is a Laramie and it's got the latest kind of interior design with leather trim and dual glove boxes and this one doesn't have the giant screen right uh, but still it has the one of the latest uconnect systems um, it has you know connectivity apple carplay android auto giant center console this was a five person passenger or five person truck right yeah but it's got of course the giant cab look at the space right i know i mean for families these new trucks with the, the crew cabs make a lot more sense. Um, some things that are a little funky on it though, like it has the rotary selector for the transmission. Oh yeah, let, can we go show that? If you wanna go show that? Yeah, let me jump in the driver. It also has buttons, I know, big deal. Buttons to shift it into four wheel drive, shocker. So here you go. Yes, so there is no more column shift or console shift. It's a knob, like Tommy is saying. But also a lot of kind of, um, capability here, hill descent control, axle lock, because it's an off-road package, it has a, a rear axle locking differential. I have four-wheel drive automatic mode, so it basically mimics kind of an all-wheel drive system with rear-wheel drive being the main kind of uh, primary uh, use case. Also has four low, and also has, I wanna show you really quick. Let me start the truck. It's brand new, it's, like I said, it's at the dealer. Um, it also has this new off-road screen, which is really cool. Kind of shows you your steering angle, your axle locking uh, capability, and your inclinometer too. So um, it has a lot of tech built in. But you also lose some of the versatility on the newest trucks because for the most part, if you get these crew cabs, the beds have gotten much smaller. Yeah, this is a five and a half foot bed, which is kind of the most common configuration these days, right? You could te technically order this with a longer bed, right? but then you have to think about your wheelbase, you know, and your breakover angle and your turning radius. Exactly. It's, it's all getting really, really huge. Uh, but let's mention the off-road pack, right? So you're getting these tires. These are Falcon Wild Peak ATs. But those are 20 inch wheels. I know, but 18s are optional too. Um, so it's not super off-roady because you don't have a lot of sidewall here, right? The old truck has 17s. This is 20. 20s, yeah. Six lug hubs. That's good. Uh, special shocks as part of this package. Uh, they're not active. Of course, this is not a TRX. Okay. Uh, but also you get skid plates, um, protection for the fuel tank, your front and a small one inch lift okay. so i don't think it's a like as much as a two inch like it used to be yeah uh, but still a lot of off-road capability with a locker coil springs in the new truck as well yeah no leaves and also worth mentioning is independent front suspension on the new truck yes it's a solid front axle in the old truck which yes is very different also has a painted rear bumper uh, just like the old truck but it's now got dual exhaust coming out the back yeah, totally. And we got to talk about payload and uh, towing numbers. I used the Ram tool online. It's like a towing guide yeah. where you can punch in the uh, VIN number. This truck has approximately 1,455 pounds of payload, which is okay, right? Pretty good for a four-wheel drive. Pretty good. And massive towing, 11,355 pounds. So over 11,000 pounds of towing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know many half-ton owners that tow that much. I mean, that's like... Oh, geez, on the old truck, I think you'd be lucky to get an HD that would tow that much. And now a half ton can do it. Yeah. Um, so. But I'm surprised there is no bed liner on this one. Yeah, it should come standard with the bed liner. And it's also just kind of in some ways a much less usable bed because it's smaller. Right? It's, it is shorter. Yeah. I don't, I don't even know if you could get a five and a half foot on the old truck. Six and a half may have been the smallest. And then I think may have been because the cabs are always smaller, right? Yeah. There's a two door and a quad cab. And of course the caps have grown. Can you get um, an eight foot on the, the new 1500? Uh, no, because they have the classic. 
So the classic is a kind of a commercial truck for them. Okay. And that has a longer bed option. So, so yeah, so, and this is not the classic. This is the latest generation, of course, like you said, with the latest suspension, latest frame. Um, so yeah, you're getting kind of a lot of capability for your money. You also, this truck will probably accelerate faster than the old one. Yes, and it'll be more fuel efficient. <laughs> it'll and it'll be, tow more. Yeah. And it's probably got a better transmission. But uh, which one of the two would you rather have, Andre? Oh boy. Uh, you know, I like older trucks, but the transmission needs work. It's fine. It's fine. No, I'm serious. Like if you're throwing 6,000 pounds, which the old truck can do. Yes. I'm just, I, I, it needs some work, this one. It needs more work. <laughs> so I'm going to go new. Um, you know, I think for the $51,000 spread between them, you could probably buy a lot of transmissions. <laughs> so I think in some ways the old is a better value. Um, but let us know what you think in the comment section below. I also just, like the new truck looks cool, but for an off-road trim, like it's got that low front splitter, you know, which looks like it's about to go get stuck on every little stump and, and, and log and, and rock. The old one's got tons of clearance. Um, it's just all for an axle, which is good. Like I just think that these are kind of set up more for off-road fun. Uh, and you're not going to worry about it because the paint is already terrible. Well, that's fair. Let us know what you think. In the comments below. And yeah. as always, this has been Tommy. And Andre. Yeah, check out TFL Classics for more old versus new comparisons. And also be sure to go over to tfltruck.com.